BrilliantMath.com, where every student has an opportunity to excel in math. Do you still struggle with your math? Not to worry. Subscribe to BrilliantMath.com and get access to all the various resources that are available to you. You will find them very useful. Today we are looking at linear equations, solving simple linear equations. What is an equation? An equation is a sum that has an equality sign in it. So for example, we have solve the equation x plus 6 is equal to 11. We want to find the value of x. Solution. There are two main ways you can find this. If x plus 6 is equal to 11, you could use a balancing method where whatever operation you carry out on the left hand side, you do the same operation on the right hand side. That's the first method I would use. So let's look at it. So x plus 6 is equal to 11. I want to find the value of x. So to get x, I need to take away 6. So I have x plus 6 minus 6 is equal to 11 minus 6. So in this method, whatever operation you carry out on the left-hand side of the equation, you carry out the same operation on the right-hand side. So 6 plus 6 minus 6 is 0. So I have eliminated 6 from this side of the equation. So I have x is equal to 11 take away 6 is equal to 5. So that means that the value of x in this equation is 5. You could also check to see if your answer is correct. So to check, x plus 6 is equal to 11. Let's see if that is true. If x is 5 plus 6 is equal to 11, and we can see that 11 is equal to 11, showing that the left-hand side of the equation is equal to the right-hand side of the equation. So our value of x, which is equal to 5, is correct. Another method is, is simply send 6 from the left-hand side of the equation to the right-hand side. Let's see how that works. So x plus 6 is equal to 11. Since here, 6 is being added to x, if it crosses the equality sign, it changes from positive 6 to negative 6. Any sign that crosses a sign of equality would change. If it was positive, it would change to negative. If it was negative, it would change to positive. So in this case, x equals, we're sending 6 from the left-hand side of the equation to the right. So it becomes 11 minus 6. And we all know that 11 minus 6 is equal to 5. So whichever method you use, you would get the same answer. Whether you are carrying out the same operation on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, which is one method, or you are simply sending the number from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. Whichever method you use, your answer should be the same. In this equation, we want to solve 12 is equal to 2x minus 8. It doesn't really matter on what side the unknown is written x is the unknown here and is on the right hand side. We can actually leave it there and still work. So solution. So we have 12 is equal to 2x minus 8. We want to find the value of positive x, the value of x. So we will send negative 8 to the other side of the equation. So it becomes 12 plus 8 is equal to 2x. This is the same thing as writing 2x is equal to 12 plus 8. As long as the left-hand side and the right-hand side 
are equal, you can write one before the other. So we have 2x is equal to 12 plus 8. And 12 plus 8 is equal to 20. If 2x is equal to 20, to find the value of x, we divide both sides by 2. So divide both sides by 2. If you divide 2x by 2, you'll get 1. And if you divide 20 by 2, you'll get 10. So that means that x is equal to 10 in this equation. Let's check if that answer is correct. Put the value of x back into the original equation. x is 10, so 2 times 10 is 20. 20 take away 8 is equal to 12. So that means that our answer is correct. In this example, we want to solve an equation with the variable on both sides of the equation. This lesson can be found in Brilliant Maths Module 3. If you don't have Brilliant Maths Module 3, subscribe to it at brilliantmaths.com. Grab it and let's do this. Solve the equation 5x plus 4 is equal to 3x plus 1. Whenever you have the unknown in, on both sides of the equation, you have to group the like terms. It is more conventional to collect the unknown on the left side of the equation. So solution. plus 4 is equal to 3x plus 1. 5x, we're taking 3x from the right hand side to the left, so it becomes minus because it's positive here. So 5x minus 3x is equal to, and then we're sending the constant term, which is 4, from the left hand side to the right hand side. It becomes 1 minus 4. 5x minus 3x is equal to 2x. And 1 minus 4 is equal to minus 3. So divide both sides by 2. We divide both sides by 2 to find the value of x. So from here, we can find that x is equal to minus 3 over 2. The value of x is actually minus 1 and a half. In this example, we're going to solve an equation with the unknown on both sides of the equation. And this lesson can be found in Brilliant Maths Module 3. If you don't have Brilliant Maths Module 3, please subscribe for it at brilliantmaths.com. Grab it and let's do this. Solve the equation 5x plus 4 is equal to 3x plus 10. Solution 5x plus 4 is equal to 3x plus 10. So the first step is to collect like terms. 5x and 3x are like terms, so group them together, either to the left or to the right. But I'd rather we group the unknowns to the left-hand side of the equation. So we have 5x minus 3x is equal to, it becomes minus because it's positive here. It crosses the sign of equality and it becomes negative. And then on the right-hand side, we'll have 10 plus 4 crosses equality and becomes minus 4. 5x minus 3x is 2x equal to 10 minus 4 is 6. So we have that 2x is equal to 6. To find the value of x, we divide both sides by 2. So we have 2x over 2 is equal to 6 over 2. 2x divided by 2 will give us x. 6 divided by 2 will give us 3. So that means that the value of x is equal to 3. 
check your answer, make it a habit to always check your answer. We're going to put this value of x, which is 3, into the original equation. So 5x plus 4 is equal to 3x plus 10. The value of x is 3. So 5 times 3 plus 4 is equal to 3 times 3 plus 10. If both sides of the equation are equal, then we know that the value of x is correct. 5 times 3 is 15. 15 plus 4 is equal to 19. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 plus 10 is also equal to 19. So we have that both sides of the equation are equal. That means that the actual value of x in this equation is 3. In this next example, we want to solve an equation that involves brackets and also has the unknown on both sides of the equality sign. So, let's do this. Solution, 3 into x minus 1 is equal to 2 into x plus 7. The first step is to open up the brackets, expand, and then collect like terms, and then solve for x. So I'll write out the first step for you. Expand. Expand means open up the brackets. 3 times x will give us 3x. 3 times minus 1 is 3, or minus 3. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times plus 7 is plus 14. So after you have expanded, the next step is to collect like terms. So we're going to group the like terms 3x and 2x on the left hand side of the equation and then group 14 and 3 on the right hand side of the equation. So 3x, 2x crosses equality, remember, it's positive so it becomes negative. So 3x minus 2x is equal to 14. It remains positive because it didn't move. But negative 3 crosses the equality and becomes positive 3. So 3x minus 2x is equal to x, and 14 plus 3 is equal to 17. So the value of x in this equation is 17. Let's check to see if the answer is correct. Always make it a habit to check your answers. So, the value of x is 17. If we have 3 into 17 minus 1, will that be equal to 2 into 17 plus 7? 17 minus 1 is 16, so that will become 3 times 16. Will that be equal to 2 times 17 plus 7 is 24? And 2 times 24 is equal to 48. And 16 times 3, 3 times 6 is 18, carry 1. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 1, and that gives us 48. So the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the equation are equal. That tells us that the actual answer or value of x is 17. Let's solve this example on the board. It looks a little complicated. But it's actually very easy. So solution. We're solving for x. We have three brackets. And the unknown, which is x, is actually in each of the brackets. So the first step will be to expand the brackets. The second step will be to collect the like terms. That's the terms in x and the constant terms 
and then finally before we solve for x. So we write the equation again, 10 into x plus 4 minus 9 into x minus 3 minus 1 is equal to 8 into x plus 3. So like we said, is to expand. So we have 10 times x, which will give us 10x plus 10 times 4, which is 40, minus 9 times x, minus 9x, minus 9 times minus 3 becomes plus 27, then minus 1 is equal to 8x plus 24, which is 8 times 3. Then the next step will be to collect like terms. And the like terms are 10x minus 9x and 8x. We'll group those to the left-hand side of the equation and then group the constant terms, that's the terms without the unknown, the terms without x, to the right-hand side. And that will be 24 minus 1, 27 and 40. So let's see. Collect collect like terms. Alright? So 10x minus 9x. 8x is coming from the right hand side of the equation to the left, so it becomes minus 8x is equal to 24. Plus 1, because it's negative, it crosses, it becomes positive. Minus 27 crosses and be plus 27 crosses and becomes minus 27. And then 40 also becomes minus 40. So when we have an equation of this sort, you have minus 9x and minus 8x. Since both of them are negative, you could add them together. And give it a negative sign, so we have 10x minus 9 and 8 is 17. So 10x minus 17x is equal to 24 plus 1 is 25. I also want to group the two negatives together. 27 plus 40 is 67. So now I have 10x minus 17x which is minus 7x, is equal to 25 minus 67 would give us minus 7 minus 5 is 2, and 6 minus 2 is 4. So 25 minus 67 is minus 42. Then the next step will be to divide through by minus 7, because we are finding a positive value of x, not a negative value. So divide both sides. Divide by minus 7. So minus 7x over minus 7 is equal to minus 42 over minus 7. So the value of x, minus 7 divided by minus 7, will give us 1. 1 times x is x. And minus 7 divided, minus 42 divided by minus 7 will give us positive 6. So the value of x is 6. You could take your time and put x back into the original equation and you find out that the actual answer is x is equal to 6. In this example, we have an equation that involves fractions. What do you do when you have a fraction in your equation? You need to eliminate the fraction or the denominator part. And how do you do that? Solution. There are two ways. So let's look at the first one. We have 3x over 6 is equal to 4. One method is just to cross multiply. 
If you cross multiply, this is what you get. You simply multiply 3x by an invisible 1, which is the denominator here, and it becomes 3x is equal to, because 3x times 1 is 3, and then we multiply 6 and 4. 6 times 4, which will give us 24. So we have that 3x is equal to 24. And then the next step, let me write the first step out there for you. Cross multiply. And then the next step, divide by 3. So we are dividing both sides by 3. So we have 3x over 3 is equal to 24 over 3. 3 in 3 is 1. 1 times x is equal to x. 3 in 24 is 8. So the value of x is 8. Let's check to see if that is correct before we look at the second method. If, eight, if x is equal to 8, 3 times 8 is 24. And 24 divided by 6 is actually 4. So the correct answer is 8. And the second method, 3x over 6 is equal to 4. Instead of cross multiplying like we did here, we could multiply both sides of the equation by 6. So, I'll just say times 6. That will give us 3x over 6 times 6 is equal to 4 times 6. Remember that if you're using this method, whatever operation you carry out on the left-hand side, you do the same on the right-hand side. Here, 6 cancels out 6. So we have 3x is equal to 24, just like we got here. So that means that x is equal to 24 over 3, which is 8. So whichever method you use, whether you are cross-multiplying or you are multiplying both sides of the equation by the denominator or the LCM, you should get the same answer. In this example, we want to solve an equation that has two fractional terms, x over 3 and x plus 1 over 2. The target in solving equations that involve fractions is to eliminate the denominators. So the first step will be to find the LCM of the denominators, so LCM of 3 and 2. Then multiply each term in the equation by the LCM in order to eliminate the denominators. So, solution. We have x over 3 minus x plus 1 over 2 is equal to 8. The LCM of 3 and 2 is 6. So LCM of 3 and 2 is equal to 6. So we multiply each term by 6. 6 times x over 3 minus 6 times, we're introducing a bracket because there are two terms, x plus 1 over 2 is equal to 6 times 8. We cancel out, 3 in 6 is 2, so that gives us 2x, 2 there 1, 2 in 6 is 3, minus 3 into x plus 1 is equal to 6 times 8 is 48. Let's continue on this side. So we have 2x. To open up this bracket, now we have a minus sign in front of the bracket. So when we open up the bracket, the signs inside will change. So we have 2x minus 3x 
minus 3 is equal to 48. 2x minus, minus 3 times x is minus 3x. Minus 3 times plus 1 is minus 3. And that would then be equal to 48. Group like terms now. 2x minus 3 are like terms. And 48 and 3 are also like terms. So we send 3 to the other side of the equation. And it changes from minus 3 to plus 3. And it becomes 48 plus 3. So 2x minus 3x is minus x is equal to 48 plus 3 is equal to 51. But this is negative x. But we want a positive value of x. So we multiply both sides by minus 1. Or we divide both sides by minus 1. So it becomes minus x times minus 1 is equal to 51 times minus 1. And then we have the value of our positive x to be minus 51. So the value of x is minus 51. In this example, we want to look at solving linear equations involving problem solving. That means the question is given as a problem or a story problem, which you now have to interpret and then solve. For example, construct an equation and solve for x. We have this rectangle, and we have been given the following dimensions. That the length is equal to x plus 2. And the breadth is 2 meters. That the length is equal to x plus 2 meters. The breadth is 2 meters. And the area of this rectangle is 16 meters square. We are supposed to find the value of x. So the first step is to find the formula for finding the area of a rectangle. So solution. Area of a rectangle is equal to length times breadth. So area of rectangle is equal to length times breadth. And our length is x plus 2. So we have x plus 2 times breadth, which is 2. And that area is equal to 16 meters squared. We were given already. So our equation, the equation we're supposed to construct, is 16 is equal to x plus 2 times 2. Find the value of x. So first step, we expand that bracket, and we have 16 is equal to 2 times x, is 2x plus 2 times 2 is 4. So next step, we collect like terms. I like to leave my 2x here and send 4 to the left-hand side of the equation. So I have 16 minus 4 is equal to 2x. And 16 minus 4 is equal to 12. So that means that is equal to 12. Divide both sides by 2 to find the value of x. 2 there 1, 2 there 1. So x is equal to 12 divided by 2 is 6. So if x is 6, that means that the length of the rectangle is 6 plus 2, which is 8. And the breadth of the rectangle is 2, which we're given already. And 8 times 2 is equal to 16. So the actual value of x is 6 centimeters. We have a story problem here, which we need to read, understand, interpret, before we can solve. It says, John doubled a certain number 
and subtracted 7 to get the same answer as when he added 5 to the number. What is the number? When you have a story problem, the first thing you do is read the story or the problem to make sense of it. Read it step by step, looking out for the keywords and the operations. So we'll read it again. John doubled a certain number. We don't know what that number is, so we'll say let the number be x. All right? So he doubled the number and subtracted 7. To get the same answer, to get the same answer means equal to. To get the same answer as when he added 5 to the number. What is the number? Let's do this together. So solution. So like we said, let the number be x. Let the number equal x. So he doubled the number, that means x plus x, or x times 2, to give us 2x, and subtracted 7, so 2x minus 7, to get the same answer as when he added 5 to the number. So to get the same answer means equals as when he added 5 to the number x plus 5. So our equation is 2x minus 7 is equal to x plus 5. So collect like terms. So we have 2x minus x is equal to, so x comes from the right hand side of the equation to the left, a binder 7 goes from the left hand side to the right and becomes plus 7. So 2x minus x is equal to 5 plus 7. So 2x minus x is x, and 5 plus 7 is equal to 12. Any time you solve a problem, put your answer back into the problem to see if it's correct. So let's check. So we check. So John doubled the number. So we said the number is 12. Double 12 is 12 plus 12 or 12 times 2. And then he subtracted 7. And 12 times 2 is 24. 24 minus 7. Let's finish with the left-hand side of the equation first. 24 minus 7 will give us 17. Will that be the same answer as when John added 5 to 12? Let's see. 12 plus 5. 12 plus 5 is 17. And 17 is equal to 17. So that actually means that the number John thought of was 12. I am Ngozi Orevogne. This lesson can be found in Brilliant Maths Module 3, Chapter 3. If you don't have Brilliant Maths Module 3, subscribe for it from brilliantmaths.com. Grab a copy and let's always work together. And always remember, Max is fun and you